प्रेजेंटेड बाय ईबिक्स कैश हर खुशी के लिए काफी है Hello and welcome you with us here on Business Today. I'm Abha Bakaya. Here are the headlines tonight. Markets end flat amid volatility. Nifty just above 18,100. Metal PSU banks drag pharma gains. Chemicals company Sigachi takes D Street by storm. Stock surges 270% on debut. Locked at upper circuit all day. October wholesale inflation surges to a five-month high of 12.54 percent. Fears that the RBI could be forced to hike interest rates to tame inflation. Parliamentary Standing Committee on Finance holds meet on crypto regulations. As per sources, the government may table crypto bill in Parliament in winter session. Top U.S. embassy official clears doubts over visa wait times and travel restrictions in an exclusive conversation on Business Today Television. Another day of consolidation for markets. Sensex and Nifty ending a volatile session, fairly flat, unable to sustain any of those higher moves. Nifty closing uh, just up about uh, seven odd points. Uh, And the Sensex also ending up about 30 odd points, 60,718. Power Grid, ONGC, ITC, Sipla, UPL, some of the gainers today. Decent traction witnessed on some of those names. And uh, on the other hand, metals, PSU, bank stocks. That's really where we saw selling. Coal India, Tata Steel, Hindalco, Aisha Motors among the worst hit. Nike, which had a blockbuster debut, was among the top laggards today after its profit fell 96%. Udayan Mukherjee joining us now, our global business editor. Udayan, what's uh, what's it going to be this week as we head into a uh, you know a fresh week, lots of action, almost towards the end of earnings. But what are the markets going to really be focusing and focusing on now going forward? I think the top of the heap should be the Paytm listing, Abha, mm. because the subscription numbers were not great. Mm. I, I think it was a little more lukewarm than what. Everybody would have expected, mm -hmm. and there, the grey market premium is also not very strong with PTM, and it's such a big IPO. I, I would say it's a far more influential IPO in a way uh, compared to even Nike and Zomato. So I think all eyes will be on PTM. If it goes off well, the listing, I think the market will take some heart from that in terms of sentiment. Yeah. If it backfires and it actually loses money for investors, then I think it might dent sentiment quite significantly. Mm -hmm. So I think the event of the week certainly. uh of the next few days certainly is the paytm listing and how it goes otherwise the market seems quite relaxed it's holding up around that 18000 nifty level very well uh there's been no major correction in most indices uh, there is a little bit of trepidation on the metal side because i think there is a feeling that uh, what's going on in china will probably ha hurt the commodity cycle a little bit and you've seen names like tata steel jsw steel hindalco actually cool off quite a bit from their recent peaks so There are elements in the market which seem to be exhibiting some nervousness, but I I think that uh, the near term direction of the market will find resolution on the day of the PTM listing. All right, uh, that's uh, really what to watch out for this week, and do stay tuned. We have our uh, conversation with our market guru Nirmal Jain coming up shortly. Joining us today. As market expert is Nirmal Jain, founder and chairman of the IAFL Group. Uh, Nirmal is not only the head of and the founder of one of India's largest non-banking finance groups, but he is also a pioneer of sorts in the equity research business, having been at it for almost 30 years now. Nirmal, it's good to see you on the show as always. Thank you, Nirmal. Uh, good to see you. Uh, and I want to begin by asking you about uh, what everybody is talking about now, which is basically these large digital IPOs which are happening. Uh, Paytm, Nike. While well, Nike's listing was great, Paytm subscription numbers were a little lukewarm. Uh, is do you sense that it is possible that uh, one of these big IPO listings, big billing IPO listings, might uh, actually uh, not end up creating money for shareholders, and that could uh, dent sentiment? I mean, it has happened in the past when some of these big IPOs actually backfire a bit. Is that risk present in the market today? With the way the uh, the Paytm subscriptions went, no, the risk is there for sure. But uh, when and how this will happen is very difficult to 
uh, forecast. So today, if you really look at it, then there are foreign investors who are putting money <coughs> on these kind of IPOs. So if you see, they've been selling stocks like uh, maybe you know HDFC and Kota banks and buying into uh, these kind of IPOs. And if you look at their mindset, then you know what has happened in the last 10 years, they made an enormous amount of money in you know, these kind of stocks in China. Uh, so the, whether it's Tencent or Alibaba, you know, when they invested, uh, it obviously looked uh, horrendous in terms of valuations with no justification by uh, traditional yardsticks. But these guys, these investors, uh, these some of the large foreign funds, they invested and they made money and they made a lot of money. And now, uh, you know, as we know that China is slowing down also, uh, the lots of things that are not going right there for investors and they are looking that probably India in the next decade uh, will repeat the story. So what they're betting on is a strong growth momentum to continue and a monopolistic or a duopolistic uh, you know, kind of position that some of these companies have uh, will basically help them uh, make enormous amount of money. Uh, but jury is out, it's very difficult to say. And I know, I mean, in fact, historically, we know the Reliance Power IP had come and that basically turned the market uh, whether something similar uh, you know, will happen or not is very difficult to say. And even if it happens, it's very difficult to say it will happen in one month, two months, two years, or three years. But all of us know that these kind of valuations for these many stocks uh, are not, cannot sustain forever. Mm. Uh, I want your perspective specifically, Nirmal, on uh, the Paytm particularly, without spe commenting specifically on the name, because you have the unique advantage of not just uh, being a pioneer in equity research, but running an NBFC yourself. Uh, and we were speaking to Sanjeev Bajaj the other day, and he said, you know, these guys will struggle to make money because there's only so much money you can make in distribution. They don't manufacture any of these products. Do you subscribe to that line of thinking? And do you think the market is overestimating the potential of some of these fintechs? Uh, so, okay, let's not talk about Paytm, but the payment companies. So all the payment companies, if you read, or payment focused, you know, uh, uh, technology companies, uh, if you look at their prospectors, if you look at the investor pitch, all of them basically, uh, you know, plan to make money by lending because they know that there's not much money in payment. Uh, so payment will be loss making proposition, but they think that they will have transaction data. They'll have rich verified transaction payment data of the customers, which they can leverage and probably make money by lending. Now that is where the uh, question is that lending, at least the way we understand as we've been doing this for more than one and a half decades is a long learning curve business. It's not something uh, where you can create something in the lab and just roll it out in the market. So again, it depends on how the, you know, you know, historically what has happened with them is it's very difficult to do any crystal ball gauging in this because there are many companies that raise money, the market remains benign, they raise more money, which allows them to learn, which allows them to invest in the market or learn by mistakes as well as, you know, keep growing. Uh, so, you know, today you can't take a call, but I, I also share the sentiment that it's not easy to make this kind of money in lending, which justifies a large valuation. But then lending is one part of it. I mean, they are basically, uh, many of these companies are uh, planning to get into all financial services uh, you know, segments. And uh, in many of these segments, we compete. So I don't want to sound on a public forum as if I'm biased, but obviously it's a very competitive world. And to incumbent players like us, we have a competition from a variety of new players. And we have to be, uh, you know, we have to be watchful. Hmm. Yeah, we're really let's forget for about fintechs or payment companies. For, uh, uh, let's hmm. forget about fintechs for a moment. Uh, let's take the bias out of the equation. Uh, hmm. You just said something very interesting, which is that people are selling, foreign investors are selling HDFC Bank and Kotex and are buying into the Nikas and Paytms. What would you do as an investor? Because you, you know, you've know you seen many cycles. Uh, does this seem like a prudent strategy to you? Would you sell some of these blue chips, traditional blue chips, and get into the digital unicorns if you had money to run now? I, I won't do that, Udyan, because, uh, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, maybe I'm a little traditional in terms of mindsets. So I won't do that. Uh, so what happens that you always will have a fear of missing out and being left out. What you can do is that put about 10% of your uh, money of your equity allocation into these kind of stocks and just forget about it. But if you ask me that whether I'm going to sell my blue chip and buy uh, these stocks significantly in my portfolio, answer is no. 
And even for me, probably I have a little larger risk appetite and that's why I'm saying 10% of my equity portfolio. But most of our clients, we won't even advise that much. But the number of traders and speculators who want to play on a, a momentum or on a swing trades or a day trading, uh, they trade in these kind of stocks. So there's flavor of the season and you just can't, uh, you know, you, you, you can't basically go against it too much. Do watch the entire interview with our market guru, Nirmal Jain, on businesstoday.in. Let's shift focus to the historic debut on the uh, bourses today. Sigachi Industries made a spectacular entry. The stock was listed at 267% premium over its issue price of 163 rupees. Pharma Input, Nutra and food ingredient manufacturer Sigachi Industries jumped more than threefold soon after its debut today making its investors super rich. So why did Sigachi enjoy such a bumper listing? Hyderabad-based Sigachi Industries was incorporated as a private limited company in 1989 with the business to manufacture chlorinated paraffin and hydrochloric acid in its manufacturing unit at Hyderabad. Sigachi Industries Limited is engaged in manufacturing microcrystalline cellulose which is widely used as an excipient for finished dosages in the pharmaceutical industry and is the largest manufacturer of the product globally. Its 125 crore rupees public issue has been an overwhelming response from investors as it was subscribed about 102 times. The quota for qualified institutional buyers was subscribed 86.5 times whereas the quota for retail buyers was subscribed 80.5 times. HNI investors portion was subscribed 172.43 times. The purpose of the issue? To fund capital expenditure for expansion of production capacity for MCC at The Hage and Jogardia in Gujarat and manufacturing of cross carmelos sodium at its Kurnool plant. So, after the dream debut at the Lal Street, analysts believe that investors should book 50% profit and keep the rest 50% in their portfolio. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. The other listing today was that of Policy Bazaar's parent, PB Fintech. Against the issue price of 980 rupees, the stock was listed at 1,150 rupees and closed at 1,202. The company had raised 5,625 crore rupees through its IPO and the issue was subscribed 16.58 times. In an exclusive conversation with me, Chairman and CEO of PB Fintech, Yashish Tahia, details the plans going forward. Now that you're a listed company, is there going to be more pressure to live up to the dream? So, uh, we feel responsible. Uh, we do not feel pressure. Uh, if we felt pressure, it would be destructive for shareholders. Uh, because I think, uh, you know, uh, we have two parts to our business. One is the core activities and one is the experiments. The experiments are what build the future. Focus on core activities and, uh, you know, a huge amount of focus on both the growth side and the efficiency side on the core activities. Uh, is essential and that's what we are kind of valued for right as a company we've always done a fine balance hmm. of experiments and if you look at our history we've been built with about 150 million dollars of burn and that's two brands policy bazaar and pesa bazaar each built by about 70 million dollars of burn today if you look at the valuations i think it's a good return for investors hmm. so we have not i wouldn't say we are overly frugal because sometimes being overly frugal is value destroying sure. at the same time we are not wasteful and i think uh, that is how we will stay nothing changes uh, we are very determined to build a business which is very strong into the future now if that implies short term the metrics shift a bit i hope we as a management and i am certainly determined not to be uh, you know uh, deterred by those and uh, i think if i get deterred and if our management team gets deterred we focus too much on are we profitable this year? Are we profitable this quarter? Are we profitable next quarter, etc.? Hmm. It'll be value destroying, not value accretive. And I think that's the message that shareholders should take away. This is a business which is built for the long term. Don't focus on quarter on quarter. 
look at the core right. core and how that's that's evolving in a crucial meet, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman had discussions with Chief Ministers and State Finance Ministers today. The meet centred around increasing investments as well as pushing reforms. The meet assumes importance as it's one of the only times other than GST Council meets that the centre interacts with the states at such a high level. This uh, meeting was essentially to seek states and their uh, ideas on how they want this to be uh, taken further because in most of the issues related to investment, development, and also for manufacturing and taking business activities, it is the states who are doing it from the forefront. Some of the Northeast states came up with specific uh, suggestions of immediate job creation for their states, and uh, uh, state-specific international uh, trade policies for the Northeast, um, the need for a policy for offshore wind energy generation was highlighted by some states. At least a few of them kept saying that the capital expenditure money that was given to them, almost like a grant, uh, but for, for the 50 years which they can uh, use interest-free and for them to return 50 years later, uh, has been well received. Many of the states very openly said that they would want the scheme to be continued. I have asked Finance Secretary to release another 47,541 crore, so a total of 95,082 crores will be given to the states on November 22nd. There are growing concerns that interest rates could start rising soon. RBI rates are at their lowest since the liquidity adjustment facility was introduced in June 2000. However, the double barrel hit of high prices and low factory output is causing concern. The wholesale price index has shot up to a five-month high of 12.54% in October. The figure was 10.66% in September and a benign 1.31% last October. The spike is due to substantial increases in prices of mineral oils, basic metals, food products, crude and natural gas and chemicals. The consumer price index announced Friday was up marginally to 4.48%, lower than the RBI's target of 5.3%. However, factory output growth reflected in IIP figures fell to a seven-month low in September at 3.1%. The Modi government has pressed the pedal to the metal on cryptomania two days after the Prime Minister chaired a high-level meeting on how to tackle the digital revolution. A parliamentary panel met this evening to gather views from stakeholders and crypto exchanges. There is talk that a bill to regulate cryptos may be tabled in Parliament as early as the winter session. Three days, two high-powered meetings. The first chaired by the Prime Minister himself. The second comprising MPs from across the political spectrum, stakeholders and experts. For the Modi government, cryptocurrencies are suddenly a top priority. Given the exponential growth the investments have seen in this unregulated asset, with some estimates claiming 10 crore Indian investors with a whopping 8,000 crore rupees invested in the volatile cryptocurrencies. With no law currently governing the sector, calls for a legal framework are getting louder. The demand this evening in the parliamentary panel meet was clear. Ensure the security of investors' money. MPs also flagged the full-page ads by crypto players in dailies, saying they attracted gullible investors who could fall prey to cryptos as they did to Ponzi schemes. There is, however, an understanding that crypto technology cannot be stopped. But there is still no consensus on who will govern and regulate the sector. The biggest issue, treating cryptos as a currency, alternate to the rupee, is simply not acceptable to the government. The volatility and the huge risk are also non-starters. Thirdly, the use of cryptos as a money laundering and terror financing tool also poses a clear and present threat to authorities. This besides the fact that major public use cases is yet to be firmed up. The two regulators which currently oversee the financial sector have made clear their discomfort in dealing with cryptos. 
While the RBI has called the cryptos a serious concern for macroeconomic and financial stability, SEBI has said that cryptos cannot be used as a commodity and has even banned financial advisors from recommending them. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister's high-level meeting on Saturday clearly showed that the government has not closed its door to cryptos and is considering a law to regulate it. However, the issue is not just financial but has security connotations, with the Home Ministry being an active part of the discussions. The panel also looked at the need to ensure investor protection laws, for which the government is already in talks with market players and domain experts. There is also consensus that the technology is evolving too fast and that the policies could not be formed in isolation without international inputs. There is also expectation that a bill governing cryptos may be tabled in Parliament during the winter session with a proposal to treat them as an asset class. However, the situation remains challenging for the government as well as the market players. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. How long will you have to wait for your U.S. visa appointment? Will you be able to get your visa in time for your American rendezvous? Should you apply now for a summer vacation in the U.S.? My colleague Chetan Bhutani gets you all those answers in an exclusive conversation with Donald Heflin, Counselor for uh, Consular Operations at the U.S. Embassy. How much is the backlog right now in the embassy and in how much time do we expect to ease the backlog so that the students who want to apply later on would get visas and the interviews calls quickly? Well, the bad news is there is a backlog and there are going to be wait times. The good news is it won't apply to the students. With the students, we know that they're not allowed to apply early and they're not able to show up at the university late. So we set aside a lot of slots for them in December and we'll do the same thing again in June, July, August. Now, one big difference this coming summer as compared to summer 2021 was last year because of the second wave of COVID and the resultant lockdowns, we got a late start. We didn't get started till mid-June. Uh, this coming year, we'll probably start on June 1st, maybe with a few cases in late May. So it should be spread out more. But again, we expect next summer we can interview everyone who wants an interview. And that's all we have time for on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching.